God bless you. It is time to study. It's time to learn. I hope you've been keeping your eyes open. Don't get deceived. For it is a trap. You see, it's like boxing. I don't know if you've ever heard the term rope-a-dope. It's where you come in with one thing in that fight, but really you're gearing up ready for the pay. So the person, they're like, oh, he's coming with that jab and I'm going to focus on that jab. But really, it's what's actually coming they're not prepared for and it's that that puts them down. Now you're probably thinking, what is this man even speaking? But you're going to want to listen to this study. Oh, this study is a big one. And there's so much going on right now. And there isn't much time. So, of what time there is, we must study. Now, I'm sure many of you are aware of the Swedish company with its chip it brought out for a certain status so that people could prove something in Sweden that they had a certain something. Now, on top of this, these can be scanned by phones with NFC. Now, phones use NFC to make payments and sending data in other ways. At the same time this is going on, there's now in New Delhi, the finance minister of the government has a rollout of a new e-passport to be implemented in 2022 to 2023 using biometric data. It's to enhance security and travel and it will be using RFID with biometrics. On top with this, there is a company that uses the microchip in its employees and they have 150 employees. Now I couldn't find the name of this company on this, but do you know what they're using these chips for? They can monitor their staff for employees toilet breaks. They are looking at how long they are working. They are looking at the whereabouts of their employees. Now, Sweden and the land with the creepy, sleepy child sniffer are voluntarily offering these chips. They're available to the people and businesses. Now, I don't know if you're aware of 2014 when Bill Gates was funding a birth control chip that could be implemented into the body and it would last 16 years. Now, if that can be remote controlled by a phone and if the new technology in the towers can control those chips, who's going to have the power to turn them on and off and anything else? They may implement into a person to do what they want them to do. The same as there is now even more videos on the black-eyed babies. But I digress. Everyone has been supporting the truckers. But I tell you this. How many companies have now folded because they don't have their stock to sell? The mama and papa stores, the independents, how many are now gone? But I tell you this, how many big companies are still standing? You ever wondered why? Think about it. You take out the little ones, so only the big ones remain. It's like that movie, oh, what was it called? Demolition Man, where the whole world, all the finest restaurants were Taco Bell. Because everything went and only one company remained standing. And it's those big ones that will control everything. Now... If all the little ones are gone, then you can only buy from one that owns all. They will control how you buy it, when you buy it, and if you can buy it, and how you'll be allowed to. Do you understand what I'm saying without me saying it? Now, have you heard what the this Ukraine MP has said? The one that says that to fight for Ukraine, to fight with them in their battle, is to fight for the new world order the whole world is villainizing a certain man 
the leader of the other nation, the bear that rises. But let's have a quick look in the book of Daniel. And we're going to go chapter 7 in Daniel. Didn't realize I'd be going back here, but we go where we are to go. Verse 1. No, verse 2. My apologies. Verse 2, chapter 7 of Daniel. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. So the winds of heaven upon the sea, and we start to see these beasts come out. Now, what does it say in verse 5? And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said, Thus unto it arise, devour much flesh. Now, it's been told to arise and to devour flesh. So, who's told it? And what did verse 1 say? That the winds of heaven are there blowing upon. And then in verse 3, and the four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. So they're all different. These four beasts, these different kingdoms. And the first was like a lion and had eagle wings. And I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. So the, the wings are taken away. And it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given to it. And look, this second one, the bear, and another, as I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Now you'd have to look into the history of France, and uh, the wings and the bird, and also if you want to look at NATO, and its symbol with wings. And then as I saw in the night visions and beheld a fourth beast, a dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, it devoured and brake in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. O oh Lord, blessed be your holy name. For we see the things that come before us, iron teeth, something that devours, utterly terrible and corrupt and utterly wicked, diverse from all others, and it will trample the residue. And we think of a certain something, iron mixed with clay that does not mix. And the doctor that is no longer here to speak what he warned, he said a certain, in that, something the size of single atom, tiny, tiny, that you won't see as little tiny razor blades. And it cuts up the inside and tears it apart. How wicked it is. This bear is rising up and it has been told to devour much flesh. Now I cannot speak on these three ribs. Now this can mean in many ways, but one thing I do think that is interesting is three ribs and a third world war. Something great, something powerful, devour much flesh. We're in birth pangs. But beyond this there is far more. This is a battle against the new world order. But do not be caught up in the support of men, for it is God we focus on first. And we call out to God, your will be done for every nation, for every kingdom. That your will be done on this earth. That you deliver your people, guide your people, strengthen your people. That we do not crumble and shake and cower. But what is to come, the nation against nation and kingdom and kingdom, these are things that must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 
So stand faithful. Oh, what happened with British Columbia as it's now extended its special passport system to June 22nd. And these are for people of 12 years and above. And then what's happened in the States? 21 of them have put across a smart health card. It's a credential initiative for digital proof of a certain something. And there are more states that are going to be rolling it out soon. A further four so far are confirmed. On top of this, the WHO, that big, big medical place, has signed a contract with T-Systems for a digital system specifically for certificates for this and QR codes for this so they can be checked across national borders. Now, there's already 60 countries using the T-System certificate. The WHO wants this globally. This isn't over. Things are going on. War is on the horizon. And there is so much. And right now everyone is watching between Ukraine and Russia. And the people are rising up saying, oh, we're all for such and such. We're all for such and such. And everyone's praising such and such. But one of their MPs says to fight with them is to fight for the new world order. And you know what that is. And you know they will implement through one man that will lead all. Things are coming into place. It's Lego placing the foundations, scaffolding being laid up so that things can be built. Things are being built piece by piece, stage by stage. The same as in March, they're unrolling a new something something the xenobot the frog cell the nano mixed together a robot that can breed and replicate itself there's much wickedness coming all these things coming but i tell you do not fear do not worry for let's go and look at scripture and be strengthened by god and know that there is hardship ahead. But we do not fear, for we have God to lead us every step of the way. So come into Psalms, and we will go to chapter 27. For we know all that happens must happen. But we will not worry, for the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy I will sing yea I will sing praises unto the Lord hear O Lord when I cry with my voice have mercy also upon me and answer me when thou saidst seek ye my face my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, but not thy servant away in anger. 
Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Although we go through much, we shall not fear. Though enemy be left, right and centre, God is there to give us strength in our weakness, to give us courage when we are weary, to lead us, for he is our king. For as Psalm 29, verse 10 and 11, the Lord sitteth upon the flood, yea, the Lord sitteth king for ever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. And I will trust in that peace, the peace that only Jesus can bring. I will trust in God while I see all these things happening. I will trust in God while those I come to persecute. I will trust in God while those come and mock. I will trust in God while hardship comes against me. While my body fades, I will trust in God. While my energy decreases, I will trust in God. While I am ravaged by pain and devices of wicked technology, I will trust in God. For I know how they that do wickedness shall be repaid. For the Lord is my foundation. For Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. To deny self, pick up one's cross and follow him. He is the template. And all this world is but dross and it's fading away and it's all being destroyed. The world, they're like, oh, what do we do? We might lose this, we might lose that. Oh, why should I be afraid of losing it? What point is it? This ain't God's kingdom. This is the wickedness world. Look at it. It's all deception. We're all focused on what they want us to be focused on. They flood the news with what they want your minds flooded with. Why do you think something is not in the news at the moment? But something else constantly is. Look, dislike that one, dislike that one. Be divided. They're telling you what they want you to be. And then you're like, yeah, we should be divided because they said so. So then you get the pink head and they start hating themselves and everyone else. You get the penguin cucumbers rising up. The mango pineapple. The fish man, the banana woman, and far, far more. Oh, but to pray for them, for they are be but lost. Oh, that Lord, show them the error that they can see it, that they can come unto repentance and seek you to lead the way, to seek your kingdom first and your righteousness. For we cannot do it alone, but with God all is possible. So we must stand steadfast in this hardship. We must be prepared and we must be strengthened. Do not shy away from hardship, but be prepared. For it is a narrow road and a hard road. And few find it, but it leads unto eternal life. So let's go to James. And we'll go to chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. This world's going to say, you can't have this, 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 and this, unless you have a certain something. And now they're implementing all this stuff in the quiet. And how many people even knew this stuff was still being implemented? Everyone's been told, oh, they're doing away with this, this, and this. It's to give you a false sense of security and then hang on, keep them worried and focused on that. So now they're looking at the war. Let's keep them worried and focused on that. So now they're not looking at what they implement quietly. The same as they put things through and they make it look like a good thing, but really it's about something else. They're saying, oh, we're going to implement more ways for security to make sure minors cannot look at inappropriate things online. By having to have a recognition system, a facial based one. That means devices being able to look at you openly, to recognize and verify. 
all that to be able to access certain sites that you talk to others on so they can recognize you and let you give your rights away that they can know who you talk to and when you talk. They want to watch everything and know everything. But people are like, oh, that's a great idea. So they can stop looking at that stuff. But I tell you, those that follow God, they won't look at that. Because those that give in unto temptation. And you are to endure. And not give in when one is tried. If you know what it is to look with lust. Sermon on the Mount, Jesus warns. And if you haven't got past it, pray and give it unto God. Put your hands up to God and ask him to deliver you and not your hands down in your pants because it's not going to help you. You need God's strength. And when you feel that temptation, you come unto prayer. God, I cannot do it alone. Take this cup from me. Let not this temptation be mine. Purify me from all this dross that I am. And in God, he is faithful to deliver you. And if that temptation come a hundred times, you will pray a hundred times. Leave the salami and the bean alone. God will deliver. Don't give in. For the devil is as a prowling lion looking for whom he may devour. And you, you give it unto God. You submit to God. And the devil will flee from you. Resist that temptation. Don't give in. He's with you every step of the way. Be of good courage. Trust in God. Don't give up. Now, verses 2 to 4 in this book, James, chapter 1 still. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work of patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. We need to be prepared so we can do every good work. Going through those temptations you struggle with, persevering through them, overcoming them in Christ. Not giving in to them, not being weakened by them. Whatever they may be, maybe you have a temper. Maybe you struggle with addiction. Maybe you like to drink. Whatever it may be, give it unto God. He will get you through. That's where the faith comes. The trust without doubt. Believing that you receive. Asking. Seeking. Knocking. God is always faithful to answer. So seek him wholeheartedly as you saw in the Psalms we have read. And now across to James chapter 5. Verse 11, Behold, we count them happy, which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. And that's the thing, you go through trials. Look at Job, he lost everything. Even his wife went to him, curse God and die. The state of him, the pain, the sores, all of it. But he did not turn from God. He endured. Though we go through tribulation, be of good cheer. Jesus overcame the world. And God has mercy on us. For blessed be those that are poor in spirit. So continue on, be strengthened, remain steadfast. Let God's work be in you. Let's look at Romans chapter 12 verse 15. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be joyous with God. And be there with your brothers and sisters through it. We all come together in the body of Christ. We can't give up. To be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things but consent to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. 
Now, the final verse in 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Every wicked thing. If someone tests you and you feel those negativities coming up in you, overcome evil with good. Though someone persecute, mock and scoff, come with good. Bring a blessing, not a curse. God bless you. Oh, use the words of this book, for this is your weapon, the word of God. And you will be able to contend with every argument of any wicked thing, with any wicked deed, for the word of God is true. Let God fill you with joy and peace. Do not be wearied by this world. And then we will come to Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So let God fill you with his joy and his peace. Do not be weakened, but be strengthened and renewed in your mind. Focus on God. For as John 14.27 tells us, and as we come to 27, what do we find? And I can turn the page, I shall tell you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So call out and ask for God's peace and his joy, his love to work in you, so that you not be afraid nor troubled by all these things, that you can continue steadfastly in your faith. For in Philippians chapter 4, And the verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. That's the thing. He will strengthen us in our weakness. We can endure all and do all as he works through us. To live as the light in a world of dark. To do what good we may while we may because we may. For this world is evil. Do not give in to it nor conform to it. That we stay clinging unto God. That we stay focused on Him and His teachings and His guidance. As in Psalm 91. Come with me unto Psalm 91. Now, I've always enjoyed it most in this translation in the New Jerusalem Bible so we shall read Psalm 91 you who live in the secret place of Elion spend your nights in the shelter of Shaddai saying to Yahweh my refuge my fortress my God in whom I trust he rescues you from the snare of the fowler set on destruction he covers you with his pinions you find shelter under his wings. His constancy is shield and protection. You need not fear the terrors of night, the arrow that flies in the daytime, the plague that stalks in the darkness, the scourge that wreaks havoc at high noon. Though a thousand fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, you yourself will remain unscathed. You have only to keep your eyes open to see how the wicked are repaid. You who say Yahweh my refuge and make Elion your fortress. No disaster can overtake you. No plague come near your tent. He has given his angels orders about you to guard you wherever you go. They will carry you in their arms in case you trip over a stone. You will walk upon wild beast and adder. You will trample young lions and snakes. 
Since he clings to me, I rescue him. I raise him high, since he acknowledges my name. He calls to me and I answer him. In distress, I am at his side. I rescue him and bring him honour. I shall satisfy him with long life and grant him to see my salvation. He's with you for all of it. He's with you through the war. He's with you through the plague, the scourge. Every little thing, he's with you. You need not fear. Cling to him. Know your Father in heaven. And stay with him and let not the world overtake you. Now, we'll come to Colossians. In the book of Colossians... We shall come to chapter 1. And in chapter 1 it shall be verse 11. When I can turn the page, patience will have its perfect work. So verse 11 of chapter 1. Strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. He will strengthen you. For the Holy Spirit will work in you. Call on it. Cry out for God that the Holy Spirit be poured upon you to work in you and strengthen you. For John 16.33 In John 16.33 These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We may have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Jesus overcame the world. And he warned of the tribulation of those days. Back in Matthew 24, I believe it was verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. We know those are the signs and the things to see, the things to expect. While the world clamors and shakes, oh, be of good cheer. While we go through the tribulation, we know that when those things come, that he will be coming and sending the angels from the four corners to gather his elect. Oh, to pray that we be worthy of the kingdom, that we be delivered For the word of God shall never pass away. Now, Romans 12, 12. We come across to Romans 12, verse 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. The hope and the patience in tribulation. We're not going to shy away from all this. We're going to keep going. And we're patient in it. As we go through it. Noah was in an ark. As he went through the flood. But God delivered him as he went through it. When the Egyptians came. With great chariots against the Israelites and they had nowhere to go with water behind them what do we do they were terrified God led them as he parted the waves and they went through the parting of those waves and as they came across to the other side the Egyptians it came crashing down upon trust in God Be ready as we go through these hard times. Praising him every step of the way. 
For there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for his friends. For we shall be hated on account of his name. Let's go to Matthew 10. In Matthew 10 verse 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So endure to the end, not to the midway point, to the halfway point, to the beginning point, to the end. You have to get to the end. Endure to that point. He doesn't tell you not to, he tells you to. So be prepared to do so. Because there will be a great falling away. And there are those that are so focused on a certain thing to come early, pre and trib. And if it doesn't come, do you think they will maintain when they've so focused everything, laying all the eggs in one basket of escape, but then escape doesn't come and every egg cracks? You see what I'm getting at? Oh, stand steadfast unto the end. For Mark 13, 13, he warns us again. And when two or more witnesses establish a thing, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So we know. We are not deceived. Know your scriptures, know your Bible. Don't listen to weird ticklers, for there will be many of them, especially in this day. Many different doctrines, many different beliefs, but based upon men, not upon scripture, upon opinion, not upon scripture. Always focus on scripture, not upon a man's opinion. The same as prophecy must be exact. It can't be 80% accurate, 95% accurate. It must be 100% accurate. So test everything. As good Bereans... Now, as we continue through, Galatians 6, verse 9. We are almost there. As we turn the pages, counting all joy, focused on God. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So don't get tired doing good, loving everyone as yourself, treating others as you wish to be treated, helping all and loving all as you love yourself. Seeing that as our Father in Heaven, we are all brothers and sisters. And when you think of your own personal family, the love and the sacrifice you make for each of them, knowing that we are all brothers and sisters, we do the same for them. We are one great family. And those that be lost, they are our lost brothers and sisters. And we seek with all perseverance to bring them back as the prodigal son. But some will choose not to. But we will work with all love and all compassion for them too. So keep praying for them and don't be disheartened. For we that endure and keep the commandments as Revelation 14.12. So on to Revelation 14.12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labours, and their works do follow them. And it's about why you do them. Not because you feel you have to, but because you love them as Jesus loved you. And he gave his life for you. 
So would you give yours for him? May we all seek unto God and live as he would have us live. So that we persevere to do all goodness and righteousness focused upon his ways, his love and his guidance. So we come over and across into Timothy. And in Timothy, we shall be in the first book of Timothy in chapter 6. We shall go to verse 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Oh, let your testimony inspire someone unto God. Every man that preached the word, may someone find faith in your testimony to encourage and strengthen, to guide as he guides us. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus so don't let anyone tickle your ear seek unto God to live the godly life in Christ let the scriptures teach you for all are taught by God be good Bereans like a fine comb Go through these words in this book and study daily, pray daily, give thanks and prayer daily. Follow all that Jesus commanded and be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. We must stay prepared and ready for chapter 4. Verse 5 of Second Timothy. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. O oh, though this ministry but small, we will work diligently, we will work continually, preaching, sharing the good news doing what good we can for who we can while we can, feeding the poor, clothing the poor, bringing them the word of God freely, joyously and lovingly, giving a Bible to those that have not, sharing a tract, sowing seed that it may fall on rich soil, that they may produce fruit. To keep on sharing the word, To bring comfort to those poor in spirit. Oh, that we not be dismayed by this world, but be encouraged in our faith, our love that God has instilled within us. For he gave us a heart, a heart of flesh. He took away the stoniness. He put in us a new spirit that we will keep his commands and do them. For man's all is to follow All that God teaches to fear God and keep the commandments. This is our all. For we were bought for a price and our bodies are not our own. So may we use them to glorify our Father in heaven and not ourselves. As we continue through 
You see that we must be sober-minded continually. Because there will be those who will think, Oh, I've been tired waiting. But we must be as the faithful servant, not the one that grew tired and impatient. That's why there must be perseverance and endurance. Though the body may be weak, the spirit is strong. Live in the spirit, not the flesh. Revelation 2.10 Over to Revelation chapter 2 verse 10 Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. Be prepared. I tell you, be prepared for every eventuality. Whatever it be, be prepared. Do not shy away, but praise God through it. Whatever God has in store for us, so shall it be. May we thank him for it. We should all seek to be able to say that we fought the good fight. And we continued through and we never gave up. Just as it is said in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's the thing. Faithful unto death. Unto the end. Whatever it may be. Some may be peaceful. Others not so. For there will be much to come. So be prepared. Now we shall come to John 17. We shall read Jesus' prayer for us. And his disciples. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are mine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not thou shouldst take them out of the world, but thou shouldst keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. 
Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved me, as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Amen. God's love in you, in us all. That we love. We love our Father with all our heart, all our strength, all our mind and our spirit. And we love one another as ourselves. And to love all is to work with all diligence for others as you would work with all diligence for yourself knowing all the comforts and wants you would have for yourself to make sure absolutely no one you know would be lacking as you would not be lacking. To know what it is to suffer and to know you would not want them to suffer as you yourself would not suffer. And it is with that that the early church came, giving to all that had need. And that is what we do. We live as Christ. He worked tirelessly, and so do we. Though the body is ravaged by pain, suffering and affliction, we keep sharing the word. Though my body be weak, and though I be in much pain, even as I speak I smile, for I glorify God. He is my strength, and it's through the strength He gives me in my weakness I can proclaim the goodness of God to all, to do what good I can while I can, because I can. We work together for the glory of God and not ourselves. For we believe in Christ and that his love in us, that work through us by the Holy Spirit, to lead us into all truth, that we be loving sons to our Father in heaven. May you be encouraged, for though we see the implementations of what the enemy doth do, we are not blind to his devices, his treacheries, and his deceptions, for we know it shall be as the days of Noah. And how wicked those days were, for their minds were continually wicked, all thoughts on wickedness. That was back in Genesis 6. And if today's time will be as that, then surely we must expect that and be prepared for that. So stay and keep the good fight. Keep running the race to the finish. Stand in your faith. For you build your foundation of faith on the cornerstone. And that cornerstone is Jesus Christ. And if you build it on the cornerstone, you will stand steadfast, having done all to be prepared for the wickedness of the enemy. Because those that build it on sand, the foundations will crumble. And they'll be blown with the wind of the world, with the ear ticklers. But stand steadfast in Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through the Son. So do not be deceived by this world. 
keep your eyes open. Those with ears to hear and eyes to see. God bless you all.